Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. This is Shan Bhagaraj. I'm continuing uh, my videos on Pinbox 7 series. Yesterday we talked about models, methods and artifacts, right? We started with that. We discussed initial three models as per Pinbox 7, right? So what is a model? We discussed model is a thinking strategy to explain the process and the framework. Right, so models and methods are using as an input to the project performance domains, and accordingly, you will get an output of artifacts or deliverables. Right, so yesterday's video we talked about situation leadership model, communication model, and motivation models. Today, we'll discuss about change models, complexity models, project team development models, and other models like conflict models and negotiation models, etc. Right, let's start the change models. What are the different change models available? A project manager can use these models handy when situation arises, right? So what are the change models applicable to that? You know, whenever there is a project or a program uh, where it involves changing a system's behaviors and activities and cultures, right? So for example, I'm heading the agile transformation for my company. It involves changing a system in terms of development approach it involves changing the process designing, it involves changing the behaviors and the way of working and culture itself, right? So that's these kind of projects where you lead changes, right? The project manager, program manager will be responsible for reading the changes, right? So there are, you know, there are multiple models available. We'll discuss one by one. The first one is managing change in an organization. Generally, there are you know, uh, uh, few steps on managing the change in our organization. It starts with formulating the change, identifying what is the vision and vision of the change, what we are, what is the target state of a change, right? What is the current state and what is the target change we want to achieve? Plan the change, right? You plan your change, how are the different steps and approach you want to plan it? You know, that's agree with your stakeholders, agree with your team members, right? Start with the training and you know, piloting and everything. That you can plan it. Then start implementing the change. Once you start implementing the change, you get transition from a older state to a newer state where you have to manage that, you know, whatever the obstacles you are coming in, you have to manage the transition. And after moving to target state, sustain that, you know, new ways of working and stabilize the, you know, new ways of working. So this is how the uh, standard steps of managing change in organization happens. So another model is uh, Adhar model. It is created by Jeff Hayat. The step one, this, this talks about the sequential steps in which the individuals, you know, responding to the change action. Right, the step one, awareness. So the individual team members try to understand what is an awareness. Right, what are the, in, in, let's say, take an example of Agile Transformation Initiatives. Right? Agile Transformation Initiatives, right. So people understand what is an Agile process, what is the management expectation on this. Right? And then they create a desire within themselves, right? What is, if this is the target state, what are the, you know, uh, I am, you know, they create a desire within themselves. It's very, very important to, to create a curiosity within themselves is very, very important. There is a leadership access also in, in that, right? The step three is acquiring the required knowledge, right? We provided, and I provided the entire set of agile training, what is required for the uh, particular, uh, Thing, right, so that's about acquiring the knowledge and then ability. See, implementing those knowledge, applying this knowledge, right, and then once you get the changes being, you know, uh, people are getting that confidence of able to work on the new things. They reinforce that, create a new practices, go for continuous improvement. So this is how the individual generally responds to the changes. How the individual behaviors will be there. That's been uh, explained in the Adhar model. It's very very important one is even the, this particular uh, process of leading change which has eight steps explained by John uh, Coter is even explained in the uh, Safe Agile website as well. It's very very standard steps of leading a change in an organization. Create that you know, first step is create a sense of urgency. Right? So way uh, nowadays you know the companies the way they want to adopt to agile methods so they create a sense of urgency and form a powerful correlation. Identify the change agents at different layers. It need not be always leader. Identify the person who is you know, identified as a change leader. You know, it can be any role or any particular domain or anything. You identify the change leaders in a particular different teams actually and create a vision for change. 
third option so once you create an sense of urgency and then you formed a coalition create a, a team of you know change leaders and create a vision for that and communicate the vision that's very very important creating a vision for change because explaining the purpose yesterday we talked about motivation models from you no know, daniel pink it talks about autonomy you no know, mastery and purpose is very very important so change model and the motivation model works hand in hand actually if you look at it so creating that you know uh, autonomy or creating that uh, purpose understanding helping them understanding the purpose and communicating that that's very very important why we are doing what is in it for us and what is the benefit for individual what is the benefit for organization that's need to be and, and then the, the process of executing that change there will be obstacles will come on the way so try to remove the obstacles as a leaders help them you know identify you know uh, obstacles and help them to remove the obstacles provide that environmental support right and then create short term wins right example could be you know piloting your agile transformation so when i started the agile transformation now i i was saying that you know this piloting is a better approach to create a quick wins right you know adaptive methods nowadays you know uh, advocates more of quick wins and fail fast and building on the change so once you identify the you know short wins identify the quick learnings of it and try to scale on it right that's very important and anchor the changes in the corporate culture so once it gets stabilized you know once you scaled it entire you know uh, from piloting you gone with the entire you know different set of teams and different portfolios and try to create a culture out of it create a you know, new normal out of it right that's very important so this this eight step process even i have been used in my agile transformation journey it is quite powerful and is useful to me as well and the another change model is the virginia satir change model the model you know talks about of how people experience and how they cope up with the change actually it talks about the what could be the experience of the people when they cope up with the change actually so that's it is a model that built out of that based on the individual experience right when you start with, you know generally you know people start with the late status quo late status quo means is a current status where it's a previous status quo what would you say that it's a business as usual right so people uh, was working in a old method of working old way of thinking about it right so you are introducing a foreign element so people start resisting to it actually so it's obvious that human beings resist for the changes right and then so once you introduce the change foreign element in there that's the possibility of bias so there is a sense of unfamiliarity right people uh, performance may come down people unknown areas will be new right so they will be uh, trying to understand what is a known and unknowns are unknown and unknowns different things of it the transforming idea right once they you know, resist and they uh, try to adopt and they a lot of challenges and flame come from their things that come right they they start in brainstorming they get some idea about it and they something got makes sense for them that's about transforming they'll get some idea about how to transform from the older state to new state they'll find an approach they'll find a steps of processes or something or standard operating procedure or something they build out it's kind of evolving and a progressive elaboration method and then practice and integrate right so next step is mastering it right mastering that you know that's where the teams individual starts performing right and then the new status quo forms actually new way of working forms and then people you know uh, further improve on that so this is the one of the model of change the final change model is a transition model which is created by william bridge right is this model is based on psychological process of gradual adoption of an individual right when the people introduce with you know changes they start with you know resistance right ending losing and letting it go some people may not like it some people quit it some people okay let's do it or something right so it's, it's kind of wait and watch mode of thinking so even when i started agile transformation journey when i started giving training so most of the people are looking in the mode of wait and watch they are not at all interested some people are interested you know 5 10% were interested but most of the people are very unknown areas to them they are want to wait and watch they are have a skeptical you know skepticism against the new things right because they are comfortable with older things older way of working because this is no issues at all right so that's the second thing right once the sense of loser, losing and everything is there the next step next uh, step would be the neutral job right the people try to adopt the new things 
fact they try to uh, something makes sense for them try to identify new ideas and new processors and new ways of working about it so a lot of collaboration and they come to a stage where you know the people psychologically feel that you know it is neutral for us you know they they, they never feel of sense they feel of little more feel of security like right there and then the third stage will be you know the people become quite comfortable the new beginning starts new status quo starts actually so this is a psychological process as a leader or project manager you need to understand that people should go for a gradual adaptation that's very very important people may start with a losing stance and then get into a neutral stance and then 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 get into the comfort stance right so that's how the change models understanding of people and psychology is very very important right the next set of models is a complexity model right so we are in a state of uca world right volatile uncertainty complexity right and ambiguity so complexity nothing but a state of ambiguity and challenge to work with right? this is called complexity there are a couple of frameworks being explained in book 7 is a siphon uh, a synfin framework which is created by dave snowden how the synfin framework works is that it is based on the cost effect relationship as a decision making aid you try to do a causal analysis you try to understand what could be the cause and try to understand the different effects of the cause right and then identify the behavior such as probing sensing according to the cause and effect you try to probe it you know and understand what are the different causes and sense their effects as a responding and acting and categorizing it that's how you know uh, a leader can behave or a team can behave according to that you know try to probe, probe the different causes try to sense the different effects and respond to that respond to the changes you know acting and categorizing it right so these are the you know uh, model which is using the cause and effect relationship as a decision making aid if you look at you know there are different ways of looking at you know, when there are obvious cost and effect as a leader you can implement the best practices because all known and known to you known causes known effects to you so you can obviously have some lessons learned from the previous projects you can apply the best practices straight away when there is a set of known and unknown causes are known but effects are unknown So try to assess the fact, analyze that, use that different you know, five-way analysis, the different methods, and then apply good practices. Right? Then there are unknown and unknowns, unknown causes and known effects. Right? You have to get into a cycle of probing and sensing and responding. Right? The fourth fourth type of uh, cause and effect relationship is a quiatic cause and effect unclear. Take actions to stabilize the action. Right? And disorder relationship. There is a lack of clarity. then what you need to do is break them into smaller parts and then try to link with the initial four context right try to identify when you break them into smaller parts identified is a, is it a obvious ones or known unknowns or unknown unknowns so it's a quiatic one right quiatic means you know it's completely unambiguity completely you know uh, ambiguous right so when you know uh, fifth type of disorder relationship again connects to the four uh, earlier context by breaking them into smaller parts so when you break in break down to small parts you, you get into any of the four zones and then you can again apply that you know sensing and you know, probing sensing and responding right so this is about you know uh, one of the complexity models available the second complexity model is a stay uh, stay see matrix section is a two dimensional matrix one side of the matrix was laid to uncertainty of requirements other side of the matrix is laid to uncertainty of technology yes, if the technology is certain and requirements are certain in nature it will be simple when the requirements are unknown and the technology is you know certain it is complicated right when the requirements are uncertain and technology is certain it will be get into complex right and then both are uncertain both are unknown areas it will be quiatic so based on the simple complicated and complex and quiatic no uh, characteristics or a category project manager project leader can apply tailoring according to that right you can apply that you know based on these complexities of you know a matrix you are arriving at you try to apply different methods or different approaches you can identify the different com- uh, development approaches and different things risk models and everything right the third type of uh, uh, models commonly used models is the uh, that we are going to discuss today is the project team development models right so you have when you work on the uh, a, 
project, you will be definitely working with the team. The performing team will be there. Right? The, the team is performing the work. So there's a model associated with the team development. Very famous model is the Tuckman Ladle. It's created by Bruce Tuckman. It, it talks about five stages, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning, right? The forming stage where, you know, uh, teams are getting formed, people are does not even know who is who. It's, it's a new team formed, actually, right? This, this particular forming, storming, norming, and performing is very much associated with the event for agile transformation. When you form a new team, right, agile team, is very much important. And the second stage is storming, where people start to have a conflict thing because of unknown areas, because of you know, lack of trust in everything. And then they slowly they get into the norming stage where they'll create a you know a little bit of processes and approaches, the way of working, right? Coding standards, you know, creating uh, some kind of method, methods, tailoring, those things happen. And then they start performing, teams start performing, getting synergies and everything. And then finally, they adjourn, they will create a new, new team or they will close the project and go for a new team. Again, when you form a new team, the stages come forming, storming and norming and everything. Right? The second project team development model is uh, from Alex, Alan uh, Strexer and David Sibbert. Right? They, they define seven steps actually. The first step is the orientation. This team is getting into orientation, right? They want to understand why this project is all about, what is the purpose of this change, or what is the purpose of this program, or portfolio, whatever they're thinking about it. And then step two, they do the trust building. Try to understand who is who, what are the skill set, what is the culture, where are they from, everything. The third step is goal clarification. Try to understand what they're doing. Try to understand what they're going to accomplish. The step four is a commitment where they'll understand how to do it identifying the ways of doing it and executing it. And then step five is implementation, where they will get into more details, right? The devil isn't always in the details, right? So try to, once, uh, you know, after how they'll go for more details and they'll get, get for finer details. And then the step six is high performance. They will, team will get into synergies. And the step seven is an renewal, right? They will go for new changes and new, new way of orienting again, right? So this is one of the, you know, obvious models of project development right so these are the you know uh, models so far we discussed on where you know in terms of change in terms of transition in terms of complexity and in terms of team development and now we look at other models available you know in terms of conflict negotiation and uh, salience so conflict model one of the conflict models created by ken thomas and rolf kinman kinman the six ways of addressing conflict he talks about it you can go for either of you know among all these six approaches you can decide which one is the right for situation as a project manager or project leader you have options of choosing any of these confronting and problem solving now try to get into a win-win situation right when there is a conflict within the team try to confront try to understand you know uh, good things on both worlds and try to have a win-win situation and then collaborating this is one of the areas where agile is also recommending try to collaborate people right from a different skill set or different cultures so try to tell them collaborating them try to understand them create a win again as a kind of a win-win situation right so what is in it for both worlds what is in it for both persons and everything the third option is the compromising it's kind of you know it can be of win lose or lose win or kind of situation where you try to compromise you know or, uh, uh, damages on both sides of it right so try to compromise when you choose you take this one and that guy will take that other one right it, it may not promise a win-win but it will promise something of lose lose or you know something like just kind of both are you know accepting and okay to that or something, right the fourth option is a smoothing and accommodating right when there is a you know problem the conflict coming from you know a sponsor Right, a conflict between the sponsor and the project manager. Generally, the project manager will try to accommodate because the sponsor is the you know uh, bigger fish in the, in the in the pond. So try to smooth that out or try to accommodate that. Generally, you know, in, in a customer friend when there is a conflict, with the customer, you know, we we try to adopt as an as an performing organization. I try to accommodate and smooth that. Shit. That's how I'll go with the conflict, accepting it actually. And then forcing, right? Forcing the changes or forcing the putting the policies in place, for example, you know, uh, putting the rules and regulations, that's a kind of forcing it actually. And then a final option is a withdrawal and avoiding, right? So try to, you know, in a regulatory where, you know, a lot of regulatory kind of industry where you don't want to have expertise on that, 
try to withdraw that project, try to avoid that you know, those projects executing those projects. Right. So very very effective model you can apply in every situation of your uh, you know, work lifestyle. Right. Coming to negotiation model is it's you know, one of the negotiation models given by Stephen Covey. Right. So he talks about three models of negotiation going with win win where you know uh, both parties are winning the situation. Win lose means and you know, in, in, in generally, you know, customer are in, in front of a government or regulatory authority. So regulatory authorities or you know, safety measures always wins actually. Right? The final model is a lose lose where both parties are losing. So best model is go for is you know win win model where you try to have you know more violation and more trust. Right? That's where you know a win win situation happens. Right? The other models that include is in planning model actually. So planning, one of the planning models created by Barry Boehm, right? So the model compares the time and effort invested in planning actually, right? See, so what is saying is that you know there are multiple options for available in a project manager where they can spend a lot of time on upfront in the planning, or they can go for adaptive planning, right? Just enough planning or something. So there are multiple ways you can do that. But what is the success? What is the sweet spot? Is uh, finding an optimum amount of planning. What it means, what Barry says is that additional planning becomes counterproductive. Possibly most of the times, right? When you do the over over planning, when you do the over kind of planning, you are you lose you know most amount of time, and then it's become counterproductive, right? So you don't need to spend a lot of time in planning. You don't need to spend less time also. So you need to find an optimum mix where you know how much of time you want to spend in planning, you spend it actually, right? That's about planning models. And a process group models, right? It's uh, in the Pimbox 6. Until Pimbox 6, there are models available for process groups, right? Initiate, uh, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, closing. So everybody knows that most of the people who are in uh, project management areas, so they know you kick off the project initiation phase, will be there and start planning it, executing that, monitoring and controlling and closing. So these are the standard process group models available, right? It's been even, uh, it's explained in pay by. Uh, PMI standards of to work until six actually. The final model is a salience model. Salience model is about stakeholder models. It's created by you know, Ronald Bradley and Donna J. Wood. This about the model is all about you know, how do you manage your stakeholders based on their power to influence, based on their legitimacy of stakeholder relationship with the project based on the urgency of the stakeholders climb on the project. So it's about who is the who is the stakeholder, what is the power to influence. Obviously the customer and sponsor will have a more power to influence. So you can accordingly you know it, it try to accommodate or smoothen our work actually. Right? Then second option is you know looking at the legitimacy of the stakeholder relationship. How legitimate he is whether he is a, a legitimate player in the project or he is an outside person Accordingly, you can respond to the request of that. Actually. So it's about the challenge model is all about responding to your stakeholders' needs and wants. To identify the urgency and the importance of it actually. That legitimacy will give you, you know, try to help you in understanding the importance of the request coming from the stakeholder. Right? The power to influence, you know, comes, you know, what is the, you know, uh, power of, you know, the request coming from the different corners of the stakeholders. Then urgency, how urgent it is. Right, so these are the you know, uh, uh, based on the models, uh, based on the salience model, you can respond to your stakeholder needs actually. Right, so with that, you know, we are come to a conclusion of all the commonly used models that has been explained in box seven. Right, so we have discussed about from yesterday, we discussed about situation leadership models, right? We discussed about change, we discussed about project team development, we discussed about other models like conflict and salience, right? So these models, existing models will help the project managers or project leaders. They can use this model to tailor the project context. According to the performance domain you are in, you can use these models to tailor your project context. So hope you got an, a beautiful idea about what are the different existing commonly used models available in different, you know, uh, different walks of life. 
right? So, which you can easily adopt into a project environment, right? So, with that, we have come to a conclusion of uh, this particular video, right? So, we'll continue our uh, coming videos on methods and artifacts discussed in the uh, section of section four of models, methods, and artifacts in Box Seven, right? So. Thank you very much for your time and patient listening to my videos. Hope you like it. So give me suggestions and feedback so that I will uh, try to continually improve on my presentations and my way of working. Right. So thank you so much. Bye bye.